going to talk about how to issue spot bar exam fact patterns. And what I've done is I picked the most recent baby bar exam to go through. And I picked a baby bar exam question because if you're taking the California bar exam, this is going to be super similar to what you're going to see, but you probably haven't seen this exact question yet. And if you're taking the uniform bar exam, this is actually going to be harder than what you will see. The uniform bar exam tends to be a little bit easier to issue spot, more tends to be revealed in the call to question. So really I'm just going through this so that if you kind of perfect this issue spotting skill, no matter what exam you're taking, you should be in good shape. And issue spotting is super important on the bar exam because if you don't spot the issues, you can't state the rules and you can't provide an analysis. So you're gonna lose out on invaluable points. One of the best ways to boost your bar exam score is to be able to issue spot effectively. So let's start by looking at this question. Now, the first thing I recommend you do, no matter what state you're taking the bar exam in, is start with the call of the question. So that's this part at the very bottom. And here it says, with what crimes could Dave be reasonably charged? Discuss. With what crimes could Bob be reasonably charged? Discuss. All right. So not super helpful, honestly. We do know that it's criminal law, and we do know that our focus is going to be on crimes. So that is helpful because we're going to be searching for crimes throughout this fact pattern. But it doesn't really tell us what crimes to discuss or anything like that. All right. So we know we have that information, at least. Now let's start with the very top of the fact pattern. And remember that every fact is going to be in here for a reason. So I'm going to show you how I dissect these questions. And keep in mind that when you take the bar exam, you can read the fact pattern more than once. I swear that going back, you know, I'd, I'd read the fact pattern, I'd write my answer, and then I'd go back to the fact pattern at the end and read the facts just one last time. And I swear doing that led to a 10%, I'm sorry, a 10 point increase in my essay score because I would almost always find a fact I forgot or something I didn't address, which I'm sure got me extra points in the end. So I highly recommend you do that. All right, so let's start with the fact pattern. It says Dave and Ed were partners in D&E's Delicious Donuts. All right, I don't know why it's telling us they're partners, but it's telling us they're partners, so it must be there for a reason. Let's keep reading. Ed was the baker in the back of the store and Dave waited on customers in the front. Dave would routinely enter less than the actual amount paid by customers into the cash register and keep the difference. Aha, okay, so here we have a crime. Great, that's exactly what we're supposed to be looking for. All right, so somebody can't basically keep money that belongs to the partnership for themselves. You should immediately be thinking of a theft crime. All right, so something like larceny, embezzlement, robbery, burglary. Um, this doesn't really raise a, a robbery or burglary issue here, but it would most likely be larceny or embezzlement. Now, this is where that fact that, that they're partners is very important because they're partners. That tells us that they both have a lot of control over this, and this crime is much more likely to be embezzlement than it is larceny. All right. So when you discuss this crime in your answer, you might want to talk about both larceny and embezzlement, but you want to um, conclude that this crime would most likely be embezzlement and you will get points for that. All right, let's go to the next paragraph. Dave noticed that every Friday morning at 9 a.m., Jane would go to the bank across the street, withdraw funds, then come over to D&E's. Every time Jane came into the store, she would walk up to the counter to order a donut and a cup of coffee, talk to Dave for a few minutes, and then sit at the table. From his conversations with Jane, Dave knew that she withdrew $250 on Friday mornings to cover her personal expenses for the following week. All right, so this is background information. I don't see any crimes committed in this paragraph, but it's telling us that he's noticing she's withdrawing money, so it's obviously going to be setting him up for some kind of crime. One Thursday, Dave suggested to Bob, okay, I don't even need to read further. I know that the fact that Dave suggested something to someone else immediately raises an issue of solicitation because solicitation occurs whenever somebody asks, encourages, or suggests somebody to commit a crime. All right, so this is going to raise an issue of solicitation and I'm gonna highlight it or jot down solicitation so I don't forget to talk about this in my answer. Okay, so let's see if we're right. Uh, on th one Thursday, Dave suggested to Bob, a regular customer, that when Jane came into the store on Friday, he should grab her purse and run away. All right, another theft crime. All right, larceny, embezzlement, robbery, burglary. Here, this is robbery because you're taking property by force. Dave said that he and Bob could later split the money, and Bob said he would think about it. 
So Bob hasn't really committed a crime here. Dave solicit, you know, committed solicitation for robbery, and Bob said, oh, I'll think about it. We don't really see a strong case for conspiracy yet, um, since he hasn't quite agreed to. The next day, Jane came into Dionys as usual, ordered a donut and a cup of coffee, and set her purse down on a table. Okay, no crime so far. Bob walked past her table, took Jane's purse, and ran toward the door. All right, so here, another theft crime. Another customer, Phil, saw what was happening and tried to block the door, but Bob knocked Phil over and ran outside. So now we see a force element to this theft crime. We also can talk about battery and assault. So when you're taking a exam question, think about all possible crimes that it raises. Some people will forget about battery and assault when they're analyzing this. All right, while Bob was running down the street and looking back to see if anyone was following him, he collided with Arlene, knocking her to the ground where she hit her head on the sidewalk and died. A lot of bar exam fact patterns will involve a death. So you really want to know first degree murder, second degree murder, um, voluntary manslaughter, and felony murder very well, because you're going to have to be very, very comfortable with analyzing different facets of a crime. Here, murder is not the main focus of this fact pattern, but you do want to discuss murder because somebody did die. Um, you could, to be very thorough, talk about different degrees of murder and uh, negligent homicide and things like that, or involuntary manslaughter, but really what they're looking for is a felony murder analysis, so that should take up the bulk of your answer. Because here he committed a felony and somebody died, so that raises a felony murder question. Um, and so Bob could be charged with felony murder. They're not saying, will he be convicted of it? Notice the fact pattern is saying, um, with what crimes could Bob be reasonably charged? All right, so you want to talk about these crimes that appear in the fact pattern here. Um, when you answer the question, you want to start by talking about the crimes that Dave could be charged with and then talking about the crimes that Bob could be charged with. Basically, a lot of the bar exams just following directions. All right, so they asked about Dave, then they asked about Bob, so organize your answer in that exact order. The last thing I want to say is that a lot of these bar exam questions require an even higher level of analysis because here we've just highlighted different facts and we've talked about different potential crimes that you might want to discuss. Um, so while you're reading a fact pattern, you can do exactly that. You can highlight or jot down what you want to remember to talk about. But one thing that a lot of applicants forget on a question just like this one is to look at the bigger picture because here we have Dave suggesting to Bob that he commit robbery and then Rob actually doing it. At a minimum, this raises an accomplice liability question, okay? All right, so you wanna talk about accomplice liability and then you also wanna talk about how that means that Dave is actually gonna also be liable for all of the crimes that Bob committed, um, you know, when they were committing this crime that they basically essentially collaborated um, on together. So keep that in mind. It's something that you don't want to forget. You would get a much higher score if you notice this accomplice liability issue um, and you talked about that because that adds, that adds a whole other layer of crimes that Dave could actually be charged with. So um, think about that when you're going through these types of questions. And this is why it is helpful for some bar exam takers, particularly repeat takers, to spend a long time analyzing past exam questions. Um, whether it be with a tutor or whether it be on your own and then comparing your answer to the model answer very closely because you will see how things are tested. This is a very standard bar exam question. And once you've gotten used to identifying these issues, identifying these facts, and then kind of going through the Iraq analysis for each one, the next time you see a question like this, you'll do a much better job. So some of our students hire us literally to kind of work backwards. And instead of starting with an outline and going through their outline, we start with exam questions. This is particularly helpful for repeat takers. And we go through the questions and we um, issue spot, then we kind of go through their outlines and we look at the rules and how things are organized. So it's something that kind of helps people. It's a different perspective. It's kind of a fresh new approach to the bar exam. And that's something that might help you if you're struggling with the bar exam, and particularly if you're struggling with issue spotting. And the last thing I want to say is it's really important to know the law to be able to do this. Some people, their, their problem, the reason they can't issue spot is not that they're analytical, or I'm sorry, not that they're not analytical. Um, they are analytical, they're intelligent, they're close readers, but they simply don't know the law well enough. Either they don't understand the law, so they can't understand when facts present an issue, 
or they understand the law, but they don't really have it memorized. They haven't really learned it. So it's harder for them to spot issues because they're not going to kind of be able to know it, you know, as soon as they see it. So understanding the law and memorizing it is really a key part of issue spotting as well.